Ready, set, action. All right, first and foremost, I want to say all, give all honor, praise, and glory to the Most High God, Yahweh, and I do so in the name of His only begotten Son, who we're ignorant to call Jesus Christ, and my Shaq, Yahweh Shai. All right, we are the Hebrew Israelites from the sect of Christ in Detroit. Now, this brother was asking a powerful question. What's the most powerful thing God's done for you? A lot of our people said waking up. And like the brother said, waking up has many facets, right? Yeah, you can wake up in the morning and every morning you wake up is another day, another chance, another opportunity for you to come back to God. That's that's that mercy. That's that 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 grace that the Most High God has extended instead of just killing our black asses, right? But there, there's another facet of awakening. Read. Isaiah 52, verse 1, right? This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 52, starting at the top. Awake, awake, put on thy strength, O Zion. Put on thy beautiful garments, O Jerusalem, the holy city. For henceforth, there shall no more come into thee the uncircumcised and the unclean. So it said, awake and put on your strength, O Zion. It's time for blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans to wake up, realize who they are, and come back to their God. Put on their strength, right? And they said, no more will the uncircumcised and the unclean be in Zion. No more will there be lawlessness. No more will there be filthiness amongst the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. That's why it's important that we really wake up, not just wake up in the morning. That's step one. Step two is waking up to the reality of the situation, right? Is that for too long, we have been without our strength. We have been without our God. We have been without our power. We have been without our heritage, our law, statutes, and commandments, right? So that's the awakening that you really need to do, awaken and put on the strength that God has given you, so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Read. Shake thyself from the dust. Arise and sit down, O Jerusalem. Get up out that low state. Get up out that low condition. Shake yourself from the dust, man. Shake yourself off. Brush it off. All right? Like I said, like we read it earlier in Romans Day, chapter 18, verse, right? That that the, the suffering that we're going through now ain't, ain't can't be compared to the to the glory. Can't be compared to the, the kingdom of heaven that that is promised to so-called blacks and Spanish and Native Americans. Get uh, Revelation twenty eight, twelve names, right? Because the kingdom of heaven was promised to only the Israelites. When you look at the entrance to the city, to that New Jerusalem, that kingdom of heaven, the entrance to that city, there's only twelve gates. That's right. With twelve names written on it, twelve tribes of Israel. Right? So that, that kingdom of heaven is promised to so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans and their descendants, right? Their ancestors. That's who that kingdom of heaven is from. And the suffering that we go through, our captivity here in America now, man, listen, it's all about it. That's why it tells you that you gotta shake that, shake off that dust, right? Shake off the dust of Babylon. Because America, because most high God is getting ready to destroy this place, America, which is Mystery Babylon. That's He's right. getting ready to make sure that we that we get washed and refined and tried in that fire like gold. All right, so we can be pure, twenty-four carats for that kingdom. All right. This is the Book of Revelations, chapter twenty-one, verse twenty-one. Bring it out. And the twelve gates were twelve pearls. Every several gate was of one pearl. And the street of the city was pure gold as it were transparent glass see that 12 tribes the 12 gates for the 12 tribes of israel i go back to that Isaiah 52. all right what's going on king your father's a so-called black hispanic or native american you a hebrew israelite that means you are one of god's chosen people you a king walking this earth you got to keep god's laws statutes and commandments have faith in christ because he's coming back to deliver you and your family and all his people. The only way we get that salvation is if we are found worthy. We're found worthy by the keeping of his commandments. That's right. Just so know that you're a king and know that you're special, man. And walk in God's light and keep it. When you go home, read the Bible and read God's law, statutes, and commandments and start keeping them. This is. Uh... Isaiah 52, so shake off the dust, right? This is the book of Isaiah chapter 52 and verse two. Bring it up. Shake thyself from the dust, arise and sit down. O Jerusalem, loose thyself from the bands of thy neck, O captive daughter of Zion. For thus saith the Lord. It said, take the bands off your neck, take the bands of captivity, forget, get, get that captive mind state out of your mind, right? Don't just sit and be comfortable in captivity. Loose 
the bond, loose the bondage, loose all that stuff off your neck, man. Loose all the oppression, free from it. Oh, captive daughter of Zion. Because the Bible tells us that the Most High God is going to turn our captivity, right? He tells us that in Jeremiah. He tells us that in Lamentations. That, that the, our iniquity is going to be accomplished. He's going to take us back and set us back to, to the righteousness, to the glory that we was always meant to always have. Right? Keep reading. For thus saith the Lord, ye have sold yourselves for naught, and ye shall be redeemed without money. For thus saith the Lord God, my people went down aforetime into Egypt to sojourn there, and the Assyrian oppressed them without cause. Now therefore, where have I here, saith the Lord, that my people is taken away for naught? They and that nothingness that we've sold ourselves for is sin, man. Because of our sins, we got sold into Egypt, right? Because of our sins, are we in captivity? Right? So what does that mean? In order to get out of captivity, you gotta stop sinning. All right, read. Now therefore, what have I here, said the Lord, that my people is taken away for naught? They that rule over them, make them to howl, said the Lord. And my, con and my name continually every day is blasphemed. That's what it is. They that rule over them are making them to howl. That's all that sighing and crying we doing to the Most High, right? That's that's that that's that agony that we feel every time that alarm clock wakes us up out of our sleep before the sun comes up, right? That's that agony. That, you know, every email when DTE say thank you for the payment, right? That's all that sighing and crying that the oppressors make us to howl. The Most High God hears that, right? The same way He heard it when we was in Egypt. The same way he heard when we was in Egypt. And what did he do? Look at, look at how marvelous the salvation from Egypt was. Right? And guess what? We getting ready to celebrate that. We getting ready to celebrate that marvelous salvation that we got from the land of Egypt. Right? That's the season we in. We in the season of the Passover, man. All right? And guess what? We don't want, you don't want the Most High to pass over you. I'm serious. It's coming to collect his people. You don't want him to. You don't want him to pass over you. You had to feel this missile fire. So get right, right. The Most High God ain't asking you to do nothing impossible. He not asking you to do nothing strenuous. He didn't tell you to go to the moon. He didn't tell you to do none of that. All he said was keep my law, statutes, and commandments. That's Which right. when you really break it down, all he telling you to do is love your fellow Israelite, love your fellow Black, Hispanic, and Native American. And if you love your fellow yourself, your fellow brother. And what you gonna do? You gonna make sure that you don't sell him nothing off, and you gonna make sure that you help him to be there for that brother. You gonna make sure that, that brother help him to be there for you, right? You gonna you gonna keep these laws, and you gonna make sure that when you see him going to the left, you gonna pull him back right and keep him on the straight and narrow, right? That's what the most I asking you to do is to love your people. Don't be like Cain, who slew his brother. Be like. Be, be like righteous Abel. All right. Keep reading that. This is the book of Isaiah 52 and chapter 6. Therefore, my people shall <clears throat> my people shall know my name. Therefore, they shall know in that day that I am he that doth speak. Behold, it is I. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bringeth good tidings. And guess what? And that's what Christ came with do came to bring that good news, the good times. We hear about that all the gospel, the good news, good times. That gospel, that good news is that you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans are not only our king. That gospel, that good news is that so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans ain't just slaves, but that they, they are God's chosen people, that they are the rightful rulers, the rightful heirs of this world, right? And they are the best people on the face of the planet Earth. And it's about time that we start looking at each other like that. It's about time we started treating each other like that. It's about time we really started believing that, that we are the greatest people on the face of this planet Earth. Right, and that's by God's own ordination. Um, therefore, my people shall know my name. Therefore, they shall know in that day that I am he that does speak, behold, it is I. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bringeth good tidings, that publisheth peace, that bringeth good tidings of good, that publish, publisheth salvation, that saith unto Zion, thy God reigneth. Thy watchmen shall lift, lift up the voice. With the voice together shall they sing, for they shall see eye to eye, 
when the Lord shall bring again Zion. They said they should say to Zion, to you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, that your God, he reigneth, right? He reigns. And guess what? He's getting ready to give his reign, the reigns of his kingdom. He's getting ready to give his son, Hamashiach, Yahawashiach, our king, our lord and savior. He's getting ready to give him dominion over this whole earth. And that's what's promised when he gives Yahawashiach that dominion. We get co we get co heirship. We get co uh, a rulership, right? If like I was telling the brother, if we be found worthy. We can only be found worthy. We can only rule the kingdom if we know the rules and regulations for that kingdom. And what are the rules and regulations for that kingdom? The Torah, right? The law of God. That's the rules and regulations. That's the governing code of the kingdom of heaven. So the only way you can co-heir, you can co-rule with Christ is to first know the laws of God to rule the kingdom of heaven with the man that's supposed to be ruling over it, right? Public salvation, read. Right? The Lord, this book Isaiah chapter 52 and verse 10, the Lord hath made bare his holy arm in the eyes of all the nations, and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. Depart. What's going on, King? You doing all right? All praise to the Most High. Your father be a so-called black man? Then you will be a Hebrew Israelite from the tribe of Judah, right? One of God's sons, one of God's princes. He said you are a God walking this earth, man. All right? And God wanted to let you, and I just want to let you know, King, that God loves you and your people more than he loves everybody else. I read right. you this one Bible verse. Give me Deuteronomy 7 and 6 real quick. All praise to the Lord. Come check out this flyer, too. I got this flyer for you, King. All praise to the name, King? Lisa. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7 and verse 6. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God have chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. So it's like you are, with the, the first adjective you use was holy, right? You hear that word thrown around, holy? It means separate. That's all it means, it means separate or set apart. So, like, you know what I'm saying? So you are separate from everybody else. These people on this sign right here is separate from everybody else. Then it says you special, chose, it's chosen apart by God unto himself. I always liken it to, you know, how we watch sports and they got the draft coming up, right? So the most high God, he had a draft win. He had all these nations, he made all these nations, and then he started drafting us. And then he drafted so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, and then just shut the draft down. He, he loved niggas. He said, these my niggas, I don't care where everybody else fall in, where they fall in. And he gave, he gave the other heavenly beings these nations to rule over. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so know that you're a king, man. Not, don't call yourself black no more. Call you, know that you're a Hebrew Israelite from the tribe of Judah. That's right. Yeah. Well, I'm praying to Sorry. I'm glad. Go ahead, back to that. Oh, yeah, king, that's what we're here for. That's what we're here for, man. Well, I'm praying to this is the book of Isaiah, chapter 52 and verse 12. Bring it out. For ye shall not go out with haste, nor by flight. For the Lord thy God will go before you, and the God of Israel will be your re reward. Behold, my servant shall deal prudently. He shall be exalted and extolled and be very high. Whoever serves the most high is going to do prudently. Get that. Get the definition of that word prudently. Bro. Right. It said that, that, that the servant of the Lord is going to do prudently. He's going to be exalted, right? Well, we know that the servant of the Lord ain't going to exalt himself because we know what our Lord and Savior said. He that exalts himself shall be abased, right? So we know that most high God is the one doing this exalt because the first prayer said that the Lord will be our reward, right? Uh, this is 87919, our Hebrew word is Sakal, and the word uh, for prudent is. It's to be prudent, be circumspect, wisely understand, prosper. So those who serve the Lord, they're going to be prudent. To be prudent is to be circumspect, to be wise. Deuteronomy 4. Deuteronomy 4 and 5, right? Now what's our wisdom? What makes us circumspect? Right? Which even the word circumspect itself means to look around. Right? What are we looking around for? What are we looking around for? What is, what is making us wise? What is our wisdom? 
Right, Deuteronomy 4. This is the book of Deuteronomy chapter 4 and verse 5. Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as the Lord my God commanded me, that ye should do so in the land whither ye go to possess it. Keep therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations, which shall hear all these statutes and say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. So that's what it is, man. That the law, statutes, and commandments, that's our wisdom. That's what's making us prudent. Go back to Isaiah 52. That's what the servant of the Lord is. That's what the uh the servant of the Lord doing prudently is. The servant of the Lord, those that serve the Lord is gonna keep the Lord's law, statutes, and commandments. Right? That's how they're doing prudent. Right. All praises to the most high. You saw that? Hey, hey listen, man. Hey, listen, man, that brother got these 40 acres of the German Shepherd. All praises to the yeah. most high. Had, had, had that white woman open that door for him, as he should, right? She recognizes her place in the earth. She recognizes her place in the earth, and she recognizes that that's a king, right? That's right. <laughs> All praises to the most high. And that's how you know that Esau is finished. That's how you know that America's finished. This American ideology is out the door. It's out the window, man. You know, they, they tried to teach you a chivalry class. You're supposed to hold the door open for the lady. Who the hell with that dog? You see, she opened that door, right? She opened that door for that king, all right? I hope she don't go home. I, well, I hope if, if, he could, if she cooking for him, I hope she at least season the food, all right? <laughs> the king deserves at least that, right? All praises to the most high. Quam Yasser Allah. Quam Yasser Allah. This is Isaiah chapter 52, verse 13. Bring it up. Behold, my servant shall deal prudently he shall be exalted and extolled and be very high. As many were astonished at thee, his visage was so marred more than any man, and his form more than the sons of men. So shall he sprinkle many nations. The kings shall shut their mouths at him, for that which had not been told them shall they see. Kings gonna shut their mouths at them. These other nations are gonna have nothing to say to us, right? These other nations are going to have nothing to say to so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. All they're going to be able to do is open our doors, right? Serve us, right? Which is which is the lot that God gave them to serve out anyway, is that they ain't nothing but servants to so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. That's all they are to the Israelites as servants, right? For that which had not been told them shall they see, and that which they had not heard shall they consider. Right? So all the salvation, like he says, is going to hear the salvation. Right, are they gonna see that all these nations gonna see the salvation of Israel? That don't mean that they gonna get partakers of it, that they gonna get a piece of it. No, that just mean they gonna see it the same way the Egyptians saw the salvation of the Israelites. Right, and, and what did that look like for them? Death and destruction. Right, play it. That's what's gonna happen. They're just gonna see it. Give me Exodus. Give me not Exodus. Uh, Ecclesiastes twelve and thirteen. Right. Ecclesiastes 12 and 13. It's on everything. This is the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 12 and verse 13. Bring it up. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. That's our job, man. That's our, that's our job as a whole. Fear God, keep his commandments, because the Lord knows what you do. And light and in dark. Anything done in the dark is going to be brought to the light. So yeah, just man. keep everything in light. Right? The light is the law. Just keep the law. Have faith in Christ. And with that, close out. Say, call Hello, Yahweh. Bashem, 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 Bash